You know, I didn't think anybody but Frank Little could be the father. Till now. Oh, Mrs. Mac. Brian! Oh, Maggie Ferguson doesn't change a bit, does she? Oh, sorry. That tongue of hers would drive me right round the bend. There's more than Maggie should watch the tongue. Oh, what have I done now? It's not you, it's me. All right, what have you done now? Something terrible. What is it? I just told Mrs. Mack that Sheila says Jimmy's the father of her baby. You what? You must be demented. Look, the Lamonts must have let it out that, that Sheila was pregnant, but what she didn't know was that they were blaming Jimmy. So you had to tell her. She was being snide, Brian. I thought that was what she was going on about. So, of course, I denied that Jimmy had anything to do with it. And now she'll be convinced that he has. It'll be all over the village soon. Well, it's going to be rough on Jimmy. And you'll have me to thank for it. <laughs> well, there's no point in crying over spilt milk. Truth had to come out sooner or later. And we both know that Jimmy had nothing to do with it. Are you still sure of that? I am. What about the lies he told us? Well, when I see him, I'll ask him and uh, he'll explain. And that'll be an end to it. God, I hope you're right. Oof. This is an awful mess I'm in now. There's no pleasing you. You want to have back, you've got to have back. Still, your face is tripping you. Oh, aye, I've got her back all right. But I don't know whether she's pregnant or not. Well, if she is, you'll get a litter of sheepdogs out of it. Not if the father's that big mongrel that Bob Taylor was on about. Oh, I expect Bob was only pulling your leg. Aye, well, he could have been. The man's got no feelings. And you have, I suppose. Telling me it was wind when I was very nearly having a heart attack. Jack, Mother, you don't fool me for one minute with all that stuff. You're just wanting me to allow Donald to go back up and stay at the tailor's. There's nothing wrong with your heart. Oh, we'll see about that when the doctor gets here. Oh, I will see about it all right. He won't thank you for wasting his time. Maybe he could have a look at Tav while he's here. He's not allowed to do that. Ach, I wonder if I should call it off now or wait until I'm sure. The thing is, the longer I leave it, the more Murdoch will rub it in. But on the other hand, Tav might not be pregnant. And then I'd feel daft for having called the trial off. Oh, there must be some way out of it. But there is, and it's very easy. You don't say. Oh, but I do say. It's only a couple of days ago that Mr. Murder was up here asking you if you would like to call it off. Now, it seemed very clear to me that he was the one wanted it called off. Here now, there's a thought. You know, you might just be right, Mother. I'll go down and see Mrs. Cunningham over at the deer farm, and then I'll call on Murdoch and tell him I'll let him off the hook. Who's going to be let off the hook? Murdoch, of course. Tav could quite likely beat Ben, even if she was pregnant. There's no doubt about it, Lorna. I missed my vacation. What should you have been? I should have been in the promotions business. You've been hyping again. I never stopped. <laughs> Everybody from the village and on the estate talking about the trial. Some of them have even had a bet on it. There's been a lot more bets on Ben as well. Was that good? It's essential, Lorna. It could be a disaster for me if everybody bet on the same dog. Oh, everybody up here bet on Tav. That was sentimental betting. Most people are betting on Ben now. You see, they just can't believe that a man like Murdoch would agree to a trial unless he was sure he could win. He may know nothing else, but he knows about dogs. Then why did he let you take your pick of the litter for Dougal? Ah, well, no. I had something on him at the time. Something on him? I caught him doing something he shouldn't have been doing. You blackmailed him? In a good cause. Oh. So, uh, Dougal has the pick of the litter? Dougal got the dog I picked from the litter. It's no the same thing. Good day to you, Mr. Murdoch. Good day to you, Dougal. Yeah, I'm glad I bumped into you like this. I was wanting a word with you. Well, you know. I have been thinking a bit uh, since you came up to see me at the Croft. Oh? Aye, maybe I was a bit hasty. I understand now what it must have cost a proud man like yourself to have to say what you said that day. Oh, aye. And uh, what exactly did I say? Well, you were all for calling off the trial. Was I? 
As I remember it, uh, what I said was that I'd be willing to let you call it off under certain conditions. Remember? Oh, I, I remember it right enough, aye. Ah, but you didn't really mean it. You're a proud man, Mr. Murdoch. You were just saving face. If I was saving anyone's face, Dougal Lachlan, it certainly wasn't mine. Well, it wouldn't be mine, for I was never in any danger of losing it. I don't think we should continue with this conversation. I'm in danger of committing the sin of anger. Oh, there's no need for that at all, Mr. Murdoch. I was just wanting to do you a favor. What was that? I was going to let you call it off. Oh. I'd never do that. Well, we could maybe agree that this isn't the time for it, uh, with the lambing season on us. I don't keep sheep. Well, that'd be my reason. You'd just have to make up your own. Uh, that's if I didn't want the trial to go on. Seems to me you're the one that wants to call it off. And uh, I'm quite willing to fall in with your wishes in the matter. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear you're seeing sense. But only if you'll admit that Ben's the better of the two and pay me the 50 pounds you wagered on the result. The only way you'll get that money out of me is to win it. Then I'll do that, Dougal. Not with Ben, you won't. Tavard run rings round her. Pride goeth before a fall. The trial is on. Hello, Mrs. Lamond. How's Sheila? Just the way you'd expect any good girl that someone got into trouble to be. She's very unhappy. I'm sorry. And her father's not helping much either. He's on at her all the time. As if it wasn't bad enough for her without that. You'd think she'd done it just to spite him. He'll come round. It's not that he's not fond of her. She's always been her daddy's girl, but now he goes on as if he hated her. If he keeps it up, it'll not be long before she hates him. It's just that he expected so much of her, her being so clever and everything. It must be awful for you too. She'd have been going to the university in the autumn. Well, there's no chance of that now. Maybe she could take her hires next year. Her father still thinks she can do it this year. Dan doesn't want her to have the baby. And Sheila? Oh, he's got her into such a state. She doesn't know what she wants anymore. But there's only one thing she can do. She's got to have it, Isabel. I want you and your husband to talk to Dan. Tell him that's the way it has to be. Oh, now, I don't think Dan would take it very kindly if we were to interfere in his family affairs, Mrs. Lamond. Why shouldn't you? After all, it's your grandchild too. Well, I've given your suggestion that we go in for deer farming a lot of thought, Dougal. And it does seem like a reasonable proposition. Oh, it's, it's more than reasonable, Mrs. Cunningham. With venison selling at 180 a pound, a good stag will fetch you more than 120 pounds for the meat alone. And stock sells at a good price, too. You've been doing some homework, too, then. I, I have that, Mrs. Cunningham. But it'll still involve a high initial cost in stocking up. Oh, not if we stock from the hills, like I suggested. I mean, the deer are up there. It's simply a matter of rounding them up and bringing them in. You're sure you feel able to do that? Oh, I, of course, Mrs. Cunningham. If I say it myself, there's no one in Glendarroch or anywhere near it that can stalk the deer like I can. We all know that, Dougal. And I'll run your farm for you as well. It'll be a lot of extra work. Ach, there are 24 hours in the day, Mrs. Cunningham, and there's a lot of them I don't use. Well, you're certainly the best man for the job. I, I am inclined to agree with you, Mrs. Cunningham. And mind you, I've still got a bit to learn. I mean, stalking the deer and culling them is one thing. It's quite another rearing them yourself. But, but I've got a good Scots tongue in my head. I'll ask around, and before you know where you are, you'll have the best deer farm in the Highlands. Maybe the best deer farmer as well. well now the painful question, what do I have to spend money on? Well, apart from the enclosure, nothing at all that I can see. Apart from the cost of paying me, of course. Of course. Well, I've had a preliminary look at the cost of fencing. I can get an enclosure started as soon as I've raised the capital. I dare say we can come to some arrangement after I've all the figures to hand. Oh, you, you won't be sorry, Mrs. Cunningham. 
I'm sure I won't. Thanks, Dougal. Thank you. Committed myself to a deer farm now, Lorna. Seems like a good idea. Well, it was Dougal's. Do I feel it's all beginning to happen? So do I. It's exciting, isn't it? <sighs> and rather frightening. <clears throat> By the way, Lorna, I do like your daughter. Good. She's a very refreshing child. Oh, you don't need to be told that she's special. I'm glad to have a second opinion. I'm afraid mine's very biased. A daughter like that can be a great comfort to you when you're on your own. I don't know how I've managed without her for so long. It's good to know I'll have her for a while yet. She is happy here, isn't she? I think so. But I've uh, felt a change in her these past two days. Uh, so's Ken. I hope she's not getting bored with us. I'm sure it's not that. But you did tell me that, well, that she doesn't know why you left her as a baby. Don't you think that... Well, I know I should tell her, but uh, I can't bring myself to yet. Uh, still, uh, there's plenty of time before she goes to college. Oh. Oh. Hi, Mum. Hello, Jimmy. Ah, the wanderer has returned. Where have you been? That's my business. Well, let's talk about something that is our business. All right. Like what? Why did you tell us you were never alone with Sheila? Because it's true, huh? That's not what Carol Mackay says. What would she know about it? Look, it's not just her. She says the other kids have seen Sheila coming out of the Aqua Sports office as well. Aye. Well, she came once, just as we were about to leave. Why did she come? Because she was chasing after me at the time, that's why. But you didn't tell us about that. Oh, come on, if you think that anything... I'm not thinking anything, Jimmy. I'm asking. Okay. Well, then, if you've finished asking, can I have something to eat? I've no had anything all day. I've not finished asking yet. Well? Is that the only time you were alone with her? If you can call ten minutes in the Aqua Sports office being alone, then yes. Jimmy. What is it now? That's not true, is it? Well, you seem to know more about it than I do. Or more than you're prepared to admit. And what's that supposed to mean? I suppose you weren't alone with her the night your mother and I went to the slideshow. Carol saw her come in. Well, Carol's been very busy then, hasn't she? Is it true? Aye, it's true. And there was nothing innocent about her that night. Oh, Jimmy. If that old oh, Jimmy means what I think it means, then you're completely wrong. You can believe me or you can believe what you want to believe. Look, let me just tell you one thing. If I thought for one moment there was any chance I could be the father of that child, then the last thing I would do is leave the lassie in the lurch. You can take my word for that, or, or then maybe you don't know me. Or maybe I wouldn't want to know you either. I believe you, son. So do I. Right. Can I have my tea now, please? I'm starving. Will it be all right if I go for a walk? Of course it will. I won't be long. I'll help you, Mum, with the dishes. Oh, no, I'll do this first. Nothing of the kind. You're always doing it. You make me feel lazy. Why don't you go? See you soon. That wasn't like her. No, there's something worrying her. There's a restlessness out about her that wasn't there before. Should I ask her what it is? I wouldn't. She'll probably tell yourself in her own good time. Mrs. Cunningham was very taken by her. Everybody is. Mind you, she made quite an entrance with her own personal chauffeur. <laughs> I was offered a full-time job as a chauffeur today, but I blew it. Well, who with? Maggie and Sorry. Maggie said she'd been considering me for the job, but she thought I was too unreliable. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't want to go to Shetland anyway, would you? The thing about Shetland. She said she'd need a chauffeur here when she became the new Lady Laird. Oh, she must have been joking. When did Maggie ever joke? She's gone round the bend at last. 
Man, you shouldn't have far to go. She honestly thinks that Sonny is going to buy the estate. What is it? Mrs. Cunningham wrote to Sorry, saying that she could foresee financial problems arising in the estate in the near future. And since she knew that he had the same interest in preserving the way of life here, she would like to discuss a business matter with him. Still, I don't think she considers selling the estate. I don't want to think it. But she did it once before. That's me off. He wants to marry you, doesn't he? Are you talking about Mr. Geddes? Yes, I'm talking about Alec. Is it any of your business? Maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. It isn't. He's a good man, and not half as hard as he makes out to be. <laughs> yeah, well, thanks for the information, Chrissy, but uh, I think I know him as well as you do. <laughs> no, you don't. He's not your kind at all. Meaning, I suppose, he's more your kind. More my kind than yours. Well, perhaps you should tell him that. There's no need. He knows. I wouldn't like to see him get hurt. Neither would I. You're not going to marry him, are you? Do you think I should? You know what you should do. No. Tell me. You should go back to that big house where you belong. I don't belong there anymore. You don't belong here either. And you know it. Well, did you speak to Mr. Murdoch? Aye, aye. I had a word with him. Good. Now that's over, you can forget about your dog trial and get on with the lambing. Oh, aye, I can get on with the lambing all right. But I can't forget about the trial yet. You didn't call it off. Oh, I tried to, but he wouldn't let me. What do you mean, he wouldn't let you? He wanted me to tell the whole world that Ben was better than Tav. And what harm would that have done you? Uh, and he wanted me to give him 50 pounds as well. 50 pounds? What for? Well, we, we had a sort of bet between us on which of them would win. Oh, 50 pounds? Oh, it was easy money, Mother. Tav was bound to win. But she's not now, though, is she? No. Well, whose fault's that? Who let her out the buyer? It wasn't me that had to prove one dog was better than the other. And it wasn't me that was daft enough to bet 50 pounds on the result. Here, who's that at this time? Well, you'll find out in a minute. Oh, come in, Jean. Hello. Dr. Wallace not here yet. Dr. Wallace? Well, you did tell him you weren't feeling too well, Mrs. Lachlan. Nonsense. She's fine. We'll see who's fine when the doctor comes. I know we've had our differences in the past, Miss Seaton, but I could not let that stand in my way. Not when a third party was involved, and an innocent party at that. Oh, and uh, who's the innocent party, Mrs. Mack? Why, your daughter, of course. What about my daughter? I'm afraid she's in danger. Great moral danger. From what? Not a what, a who. From Jimmy Blair. <sighs> she's been seeing quite a lot of him these days, hasn't she? She has, but if that's the worst danger she ever gets into, then I'll never have anything to worry about. Oh, he's managed to deceive quite a lot of people with his butter-wouldn't-melt-in-his-mouth ways. But I think you'd be one of them. Well, I am, Mrs. Mack. Even after the way he's been taking advantage of girls he takes to school in the morning. I'm sure he has never done anything of the kind. Oh, you haven't heard then? No, and I'm not sure that I want to. Perhaps not. But I think it's my duty to inform you of it. Sheila Lamont is going to have a baby and Jimmy Blair is the father. I don't believe it. Oh, well, I'll leave that to you, Miss Seaton. But I think you should know that it was Isabel Blair who revealed it to me. I'll let myself out. Did you uh, enjoy your walk? I had something to think out, Mother. Oh. I know there isn't a lot to do here, but uh, things will be a bit livelier soon. It won't be long before the uh, Glendarroch Games. Uh, you'll enjoy that. Mother, I won't be here for the Games. Why not? We agreed. No questions. So we did. 
Marion, if it's something I've done. No, it's nothing anyone's done. I'm glad I came, and I'm glad I met you. But I want to go now. Please don't ask me why. Dr. Morris is taking his time over it. He's very thorough. What's he got to be thorough about? There's nothing the matter with her. Well, she told me she wasn't feeling well. She would. I know fine what she's up to. Oh? Aye, she's been pestering me for ages to let Donald go back and live with Alice. But I won't have it. So now she's trying to get the doctor to say that she's not fit to look after him. Ah, but he'll see through her games all right. She'll be lucky if he doesn't give her a telling off for wasting his time. Sit yourself down, Mrs. Lachlan. I told you to take it easy, didn't I? Yes, you did, Doctor. Well, this is what comes of not heeding your doctor's orders. You're just going to have to rest now. Do you mean she's really not well? No, she's not, Dougal. Here, what have I been telling you? Have you anyone you could go away and stay with? I don't need to go and stay with anyone, Doctor. I can rest perfectly well here, if only I don't have to look after Donald. You could go and stay with Auntie Maeve in Dumbarton. I don't want to go and stay with anybody, Dougal. I think you should, Mrs. Lachlan. Look, it's no good you saying you can rest here. You won't. As soon as you feel well enough, you'll start over doing it again. Is it that bad? No, but it will be unless your mother takes a lot more rest. Well, look, I could go and phone Auntie Maeve now. Well, that'd be a good idea, Dougal. I'll be fine here. No, you won't. I'll ask her if she can take you right away. Jean, would you stay with her till I get back? I don't think she should be alone in her state of health. I'll do that, Dougal. Now, I won't be long, Mother. <laughs> oh, I fairly put the wind up him. Thank you, Doctor, for telling him that I'm not well. <laughs> well, I'll have to let Donald go to Alice's now. I was a wee bit of surprise, though, when you said I would have to go away. And then I saw that that was the surest way of getting Dougal to let the boy go. No, Mrs. Lachlan, mm. that wasn't the reason. The truth is, there is a wee murmur in your heart. And you really do have to go away and rest. <laughs>